Today we have a package unit that's not working properly. This is a Linux. Uh, I believe it's an 18 ton. We'll confirm that in a minute. Uh, first thing we do is we open it up. And the circuit board we have an error code 10. Error code 10 right here. is 24 volt power loss, terminal board 35. So whenever I see anything 24 volts, the first thing I wanna do is look at transformers. Okay, this unit has dual transformers with a resettable circuit breaker. That one's tripped. So we have the tripped circuit breaker on the transformer. Okay, before we do anything, we're gonna go ahead and check to see if anything is grounded or shorted on the low voltage side of that transformer by putting our meter on continuity, turning off power to the air conditioner and testing from each leg to ground to see if we have anything that's shorted out before we just try to reset it and or replace the transformer. So I'm gonna get my meter out and we'll start checking things. Okay, so I turned main power off for a minute just to check to make sure there was no electrical problems that I could see so I can jiggle some wires around and stuff. Nothing jumped out at me. I turned main power back on. We're gonna test three phase power coming into this guy. We got three phase coming into the unit. I already reset the transformer, but I pulled the two low voltage wires off of the terminal board that's in the back there. So the low voltage wires are safely secure, or you know, just kind of tucked up in here. So I can test to see if we've got 24 volts. So the transformer is outputting 24 volts. Whether or not there's still a problem with the transformer, we don't know. It could trip under a load, who knows. But that tells us that right now the transformer's, you know, as best as we can tell is working okay. So now what I need to figure out is this is transformer T18. I need to figure out what that controls and I'm gonna investigate those components before I hook power up and go any further. Maybe I could find a problem with the components that that transformer con controls. So what we'll do is I'm gonna find, I'm gonna look at the schematics right here. I'm gonna find that transformer on the schematic and see what things that transformer controls and then I'm gonna test those components. Okay, so what I found, so I went over here to my schematic, and I noticed that there's a transformer here, and there's a transformer here. My transformer is labeled T18, and the other transformer is labeled T1. So T1 is right here, T18 is my transformer. There's the circuit breaker on my transformer, and here's my line going to my ladder diagram. So what I ended up doing was I followed my ladder diagram, and I circled every point, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one, that my transformer went to a relay, or a load, I should say. So those are all the items that I'm going to be investigating before I start resetting that transformer. I like Linux because they label everything, K149, K150, K14, K146, K3. Those are where I'm gonna start, and then you could follow them across to the other things they go through. So it looks like it goes through pressure controls. Another thing that I notice is up here in the unit, that transformer T1A says it goes to the contactors, and this one says it goes to control. So, and that does kind of make sense because my loads right here k149 k150 those are uh, relay coils i believe and then i see pressure controls here so that makes a lot of sense so i'm going to start looking into those items again this is all before i reset or rehook up that transformer as i'm going through everything here like i showed you i'm just going to start at the back of my ladder diagram here and we're going to start at actually we'll start right up here at the front k149 K149 is labeled right up in here. K149, it's the relay for outdoor fan number three. I went ahead and pulled the relay out. It's an ice cube relay just to investigate it. And then we're gonna go through each component. Like I said, they're labeled. And we're gonna test the low voltage coils to make sure everything's working properly on them. So at this point, 
I've gone through and tested all the relays. Checked the resistance values, compared them to each other, made sure that nothing was grounded out. I marked all the relays I checked. This one, this one, this one, those two up there. And I'm not seeing any problems yet. So in my opinion, I've done everything that I can. I've traced the wires all the way back to this board. Don't see any problems. I've investigated everything that I could. So at this point, I've got to turn on power and just see what happens. But the important thing is, is that I took the time to verify that there was nothing obvious that jumped out at me. This is when you got to have your eyes and ears open right now because you may only get one chance at this. You may hear, you may see what's going on. You just got to pay attention. So I'm going to turn power on right now. didn't trip right away, so we just want to listen. We got another error message, number 52. Up, and we just tripped. So whatever's happening, is happening right away. And it's interesting that we got another error code 52. Limit switch open. Secondary heat limit is open. That's interesting. You know, you wouldn't think that anything to do with the gas system would affect us right now but it's always possible. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off and go inspect the limit switches to see if we see any shorted out wires on the limit switches. One of the really cool things I like about these older Linux units is the blower assemblies pull out really easy so you can access the bearings to grease them. And here's all our limit switches right here. Secondary, there's a broken wire. Uh, these limit switches don't look too hot. So I'm going to fix this wire and then we're going to test it. I believe that's a ground wire, but we'll see. And then we'll test everything and see if there's anything else that's causing a problem. Okay, so I think I found it. Um, when I found that wire that was, uh, that ground wire that pulled off on that limit switch, it had rubbed against uh, another wire. It rubbed against this white wire inside there or one of the white wires. And uh, I was getting continuity on this wire before I pulled that blower assembly out. Once I uh, repaired that ground wire and resecured it, I'm not getting continuity anymore on that wire. That wire's going to the coil but I'm still getting, just test it, yeah. So see no continuity anymore and I was getting continuity. I believe that that ground wire was rubbing up against something it shouldn't be and it was causing this unit to trip. Now it's important, just a minute ago I said we're gonna listen, we're gonna watch, we're gonna use our eyes and our ears because it tripped but then I saw another error code, error code 52. Now I really had no which way to start on this unit. I'd have been tearing apart every single wire to try to find a short. But that error code popped up and it kind of got me thinking. And that's what made me look at the limit switch and then I said hey maybe I should start there. Even though that error code is still on here. There was obviously something going on with the limit switch. So I started there and I believe I found the short. Now um, I also moved a bunch of wires around so I'm gonna watch this unit for a little while to make sure that my short wasn't somewhere else And maybe by moving the wires I just fix the short, you know, like the wires aren't touching ground anymore So that's why I'm gonna watch this unit jiggle a bunch of wires But at this point I can start this unit up and it stays running and the compressors all come on too So and it's not tripping anymore So we're gonna watch this unit for a little while While I'm watching this unit turn on, what bugs me is, is that I see an enthalpy sensor sitting right here. And I'm wondering why the heck is there an enthalpy sensor here? So then, again, I'm just watching the unit operate. And I come over here and the enthalpy sensor is missing from the economizer damper in here. It should be mounted right in here. 
and it should be plugged in right to that plug. So that's definitely a problem. Then I got in here to look at this economizer. You guys hear that sound? The gears inside the motor are bad. Economizer's not working right. I haven't checked voltage yet, but my economizer's fully open and it's not moving. And then I went over to the uh, economizer control on the circuit board and turned it, and this thing doesn't open at all. And you can just hear the gears grinding inside there. So they've got a bad economizer motor too. So just because I wanna look at the big picture, I put my gauges on all the circuits, check out all the pressures, and I'm kind of blown away. This unit's a 2003 model. I've serviced it since 2004, I think. And uh, really, there's not much been done. We changed the circuit board on it a couple years back. Refrigeration-wise, it's never been cut into. It's got perfect charge. I mean, <laughs> Shows you, man. I, I really liked these LGA units. The new units that they're making, they're nice, but I, I don't know, man. There's something about these that I really, really like. The the new ones that have the Prodigy board. I mean, the Prodigy board has its pluses. There's things I like about it, but I'm just so used to this. Uh, was it an M18 board? Yeah, I think so. I think it started with the M16 and went all the way up to the M18. I think that's what it is. But um, yeah, I really liked this board. It was really easy to work with. But anyways, I mean, not knocking the Prodigy board. The Prodigy ones are nice too. They're just uh, a whole new beast to get used to. Cool thing about the Prodigy is, is it's a lot easier to uh, hook your computer up to. This one, uh, you could do it, but it, I just find it easier with the Prodigy to be able to set parameters and different things. So um, refrigeration wise, we're looking good. All the condenser fan motors are running. Pressures look good. We're gonna order some limit switches. Uh, you know, just like if you've seen any of my other videos, when I order limit switches, I order all the limit switches. So, um, there's three limit switches for the gas heat on this guy. I'm gonna change them all at the same time. Um, we're also gonna order an economizer motor, and we're also gonna order an enthalpy sensor for the outdoor air damper because we can't uh, open the outside air damper at all right now to get any fresh air in the building. This restaurant doesn't really use the economizer for, you know, um, the economizing function. They more or less just use it for minimum outside air. So it's been balanced that way. They don't like the variable outside air damper opening and closing. So we just need a minimum uh, amount of outside air on this unit. So that's why we got to get that uh, outdoor air damper back on and um, get the uh, enthalpy sensor back on there. So that way we can modulate those dampers and get them their fresh air to help balance out the building. I'm finding that as a trend in these restaurants. I don't know if you guys noticed this. Let me know in the comments that we are not putting makeup air units on the roof very much anymore for the most part. Sometimes you find them, but they're usually really small if you do. Most of the time we're pulling our uh, outside air through the ACs. Uh, I understand too, it's to meet code because they have minimum fresh air. Um, codes that they want basically to uh, vary depending on the amount of people in the building. So a lot of times they'll use the ACs um, when they stage up, assuming there's more people in the building. I mean, there's lots of logic to it. There's really no great way to perfectly figure out adjusting the outside air damper. Some people try to use CO2 sensors. Uh, there's faults in that too, because a lot of times the CO2 sensors are located in the wrong spots and uh, they prematurely open and bring a lot of outside air in the building. I tend to find, I don't know if you guys see this, but I tend to find buildings that use uh, uh, demand control ventilation um, using CO2 sensors to have a lot of uh, nuisance complaints in the winter time about uh, cold air in the building. And typically what I notice um, is that the restaurants, uh, it's hard to convince them to keep their blower motors running. So they tend to, uh, uh, put the blowers into auto, which in a restaurant that doesn't work, but they tend to put the blowers into auto. So when they finally get a call for heat, it uh, they get a blast of cold air in the building. I prefer to leave them in the on mode. So that way you're getting a steady amount of fresh air in the building. So that way the heat can properly regulate and you don't get those high and low temps. But anyways, have you guys been seeing that? 
Um, I've been noticing the trend since we've been using demand control ventilation of, of more complaints and they just never seem to work correctly. I tend to find um, the customers are a lot happier when they just have minimum outside air and not a modulating economizer. Um, I think that there's a place for a modulating economizer. I understand the uh, efficiency potential and the energy savings, but I think that we don't have the technology to perfect demand control ventilation quite yet, or at least it's not mainstream or cheap enough. So I think that, you know, for now we just kind of struggle. I really think that wish, I should say, that um, more customers would like to use economizers. Uh, most of the time, uh, restaurants don't want to fix them. They don't want economizers fixed because to them they just don't understand the savings or they, the, the savings isn't realized, you know. Um, restaurants tend to not be too focused on electricity bills, at least in my case. Uh, they tend to be, no, you know, basically they just want their equipment working and they look at the numbers of sales that they sell food. Um, I don't know if it's a true fact that they don't save as much with the economizers i kind of wonder if it's more hype than it is actual uh, savings anyways i'm going off on a tangent um we're going to order the parts for this unit all right so uh electrical short on the ac found it to be a low voltage wire problem uh one of the heater safety limit switches a uh, ground wire broke off and rubbed up against a power wire shorted the transformer out. While I was doing that, I found that the limit switches are actually bad. Also found that the economizer motor and the enthalpy sensor are bad. Uh, went ahead and put my gauges on the unit, went through all stages, everything, refrigerant charge was looking pitching, airflow looked decent. Everything else checked out about the unit, so it was just a basic electrical short. We're gonna go ahead and uh, order some parts and uh, head on back out there and get those replaced. But for now, they're good to go. Uh, watch the unit for about half hour, 45 minutes, operate. Everything was good. All right, catch you on the next one.